Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. In this episode, I want to delve deeper into astral sorcery, and I'm pretty sure I will get to the point where I can get the uninspected mineral. That's my goal, anyway. But before that, I want to do a couple quick things. One thing I want to do is upgrade my backpack. So I'm going to upgrade just my normal backpack. There's no reason to upgrade my mining backpack. Never gets too full, but my general backpack is very, very full. So I'm going to upgrade it from gold to diamond. Just a bunch of diamonds and a couple chests. And I'm also going to craft another button upgrade, which I've already got in my mining backpack, but I don't have any upgrades at all in my general one. That's going to allow me to sort it. Alright, let's see how big this thing is. Nice. Yeah, much bigger. It's got maybe like a dozen or two dozen extra slots. Okay, with that out of the way, the next thing I want to do is make a glider. So a glider is something that I've seen used quite a bit in an older version of Minecraft. It used to be part of Open Blocks, which is a mod that adds a, a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of different types of blocks. Gliders adds tanks that store liquid and stuff like that. It does a bunch of things. Uh, that mod does not exist in this version of Minecraft. However, individual little bits and pieces from Open Blocks have been ported over to this version. And one of them is Open Glider, just porting the glider over. So I've seen the old version used. And it gives you really good horizontal movement, right? I mean, it allows you to glide, and quite fast. So I'm hoping that, combined with my jetpack, is going to allow me to move a lot faster and save fuel, because the jetpack is really good at giving me vertical height. It's great at that. But if I want to move forwards, it's very slow. So the glider might be perfect for that. I could jetpack just way, way up with this, and then once I reach a good height, just glide the rest of the way. So let's try it. I should have made this way, way early. It's super cheap. It's just leather, iron, and sticks. So leather and sticks for the wing pieces, left and right. And then just a bunch of iron for the scaffolding. And that's it. Let's go in the center. Yeah. Okay. I've never used this before. Hopefully I don't die. <laughs> cool. Alright, so let's see how this works exactly. Yeah, look at how much faster this is. Ah, I wish there was a wind noise, though. Such a lost opportunity. It feels so nice if there was a wind noise. Don't know why, like, all movement in Minecraft has no noise. Aside from, like, walking and running, but, you know, jetpacks make pretty much no noise. Gliding makes no noise. So, looks like it goes in whatever direction you aim. Uh, looks like you have some control over it with the arrow keys. Like if I hold down right, it kind of slowly goes right. Oh. Oh shit, it has durability. That's new, I don't think it had durability before. Hmm, interesting. So, I'm using my jetpack when I do this, aren't I? Yeah, you can use your jetpack while using it. Oh, that's sweet. I don't think you could do that before in the old version of, of Minecraft that I've seen people use the glider in. I'm pretty sure they had to stop using the glider jetpack and then start using it again because they had to keep like unequipping it and re-equipping it. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, so you can go faster with sprint. So just holding forwards makes you go faster. I don't know if holding sprint actually does anything. I mean, it does the sprint effect where your, you know, field of view changes, but I don't know if it actually makes you faster. Either way, this is really cool. I think it is faster looking at the menu map. This shifting. That looks faster than this. Yeah, definitely. Look at how far I can go. I'm already to unexplored territory. This is so fun, I just want to keep gliding into the unknown. How far away from base am I already? Ooh. 
Is my base here? It's not showing up probably because I'm at too high of a Y level to see the, the claimed chunks that I have. Anyway, okay, uh, enough fun with this. This is going to be really great. But uh, let's get back to Astral Sorcery. Whee! Ow. Ah, I should also mention that I did something a little bit dangerous, but I think it's worth it. I updated some of the mods in the mod pack. That's something you don't want to do very frequently, especially not just... Don't just update all of them, like a dozen or two dozen mods, without looking at what you're doing, because very, very often it'll produce some sort of a problem that's going to ruin things. But I very carefully updated a couple ones. I updated Immersive Engineering, because it had undergone major changes and bug fixes and stuff. Um, I upgraded the Industrial Wires mod, which is what's responsible for those EU power lines that I have over there. And one of the bugs fixed in that, by the way, is it makes it so you no longer lose power through transmission lines when uh, machines aren't running. So I think that solved that problem I was having before, where I kept running out of power even though no machines were doing any work at all and were completely full. And probably the most important one that I updated is Astral Sorcery. Because you know I was having the issue before where in the journal when I clicked on the constellations it crashed the game? Oh, well, I was having that, plus I was just looking at the patch notes for the newer version and, and the version I was using was quite old. And the newer ones had changed a lot of things and looked like they made tons of bug fixes. So I just went ahead and did it. And it does look quite a bit better. Um, the constellations, you can now click, click on them and it does not crash. So that's nice. Oh, also, one of the things they added in one of the newer updates is marble stairs. The things that I had to chisel before because there were no marble stairs. So, very nice. Alright, so the next thing I want to make is the linking tool. Which seems to allow you to, well, link things together. Particularly sources of starlight. You can link to other things. And it appears to be what you need to do to make the iron transmutation, and maybe even other types of transmutation, because you can direct light to things which can transmute them, apparently. So, let's try it out. Recipe's just sticks, wood, rock crystal, and two aquamarine. Oh yes, and I re-enabled the crafting sound because of the update. I figured maybe they fixed the problems with it. Now I'm hoping this is how I get the spectral relay to work. Maybe I need to use the linking tool to link it and aim it towards that. Mm. No, it doesn't look like it. Selected altar. Nope. All right, that's not how that works. Well, let me figure out how to transmute a block, because I'm going to need a source of light. This thing, this crafting altar is not a source of light. I need some way to, I don't know, gather it up. Some sort of a, well, something, <laughs> something like a spectral relay would be nice. I think the light wells might be able to direct themselves and give their, their uh, liquid starlight to other things, because I can select them as a source. So let's try this. This one's, they're both probably like 60, 70% full. And what it suggests is to do it on iron. Hmm. That's odd. You can select it, but you can't... You can't select any of these. I don't get it. Well, in the book it suggests one easy way you can get starlight focused on something to transmute it is to use one of the crystals. Like, use this thing. I mean, there's gotta be a better way than that, though. But, let's try it. Uh, it says you may want it to be able to uh, have line of sight with this guy. So, let's break this open. It's gonna be water up here, but it's alright. Okay. 
hopefully that's made it more powerful. So let's see if you work. There we go. Okay, that transmutation was taking five million years. I still have no idea if it's actually completed. Um, I waited like five minutes. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna make a crystal lens. So, just a bunch of glass lenses, aquamarine, rock crystal, gold, rune marble. Pretty straightforward, a little bit pricey. And I believe the book says that crystal lenses, which are used to redirect starlight, um, that how much starlight they allow through them is dependent on the purity of the rock crystal, because it's the rock crystal itself that does the redirecting. That's kind of the lens part. So depending on the purity of the rock crystal, you'll get more light coming through it, less loss. So I chose the one with the best purity, 80%. And I think that you don't actually use up the whole rock necessarily by making this. I think you just use up part of the size, although I'm not sure. Let's try this. And what I'm thinking is maybe certain things like the light wells, maybe they can't directly focus onto something to transmute. Perhaps they have to go through a lens and then the lens can focus on something. That's what I'm thinking. So maybe I can use the light wells. Um, more than one. Oh, oh, it doesn't use up. It doesn't use up part of the size. Rather, it, uh, I guess the size of it determines how many lenses it makes quite literally. Okay. Just for curiosity's sake, let's go see if it actually finished. It's not even finished. Oh, and I did find out, by the way, that unfortunately if you break a light well, it loses any liquid that's inside of it. So, as much as I'd like to relocate these, I don't want to lose the precious, precious fluids. Let's try it here. No, that doesn't work. Ah! Can these lenses, like, seriously only work on those crystals? I don't get it. How come you can select these as a thing to start linking if they don't link anywhere? Alright, well, the crafting altar itself collects light. Can it, by any chance, redirect? Nope. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think I made a mistake. The rock crystal itself didn't actually have a clear view to the sky. I broke this up so I could had a clear view from here, but I forgot there's another layer. Whoops. I'm assuming that's what made it transform so fast. Star metal ore. Oh, I've got no room. Got so much garbage on me. Let's, uh, let's try another one just to see if it's maybe super fast now that it's actually got a view to the sky. Oh yeah, it's already shining there. Oh god, yeah, okay, never mind. Wow, it's like instant. That makes all the difference. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel silly. So what do you do with that exactly? Put it into the crusher? We get stardust. It's so pretty. Slight chance of a, a third stardust. Or you can just turn it directly into an ingot, but that'd be a waste, and I'm guessing you can just smelt that. Oh, wait. No, you can't smelt that. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like if you turn into stardust. That's it, it's stardust, and you can't turn it into an ingot. According to the recipes, anyway. So you gotta choose whether you want to put it in the crusher and get stardust, or turn it into an ingot. Well, there's no going back. Oh, come back here. Uh, I want to test something else, too. I think that's... Ah, uh, that's all of the... Uh, iron that I had. I want to see if I can focus this thing on multiple things at the same time. But anyway, let's try sand and gravel. So gravel should give me the uninspected ore. Sand, I have no idea. But that's shown in the book. If you go back here, 
block transmutation. This is, says, like, try some other stuff. And then it cycles through all these different blocks. A couple of them are sand. And I know gravel works, so let's try it. It should be pretty much instant, right? Like the iron? Oh, pff, a stay. Uh, Alright, let me see if I can focus it here too. Oh yeah, yep. It's focusing on three different places right now. See, it's taken a while, whatever it is, but we have uninspected mineral. Beautiful. Oh, and that... <laughs> it just turns into clay. <laughs> whoop de doo Alright, that is our first piece of uninspected mineral. Yeah, so at that speed, that is perfectly fine. I can just get some lenses to redirect that over to my base, and yeah, that'll be great. Alright, let's go try this thing out. There it goes. Haha! -ha. Three pieces of sulfate mineral. Oh, I guess it gives you a different type of mineral. Wait, I I'm guessing it's random, because I think there's multiple kinds, right? Yeah, borate, arsenate, carbonate, all sorts of things. Okay. So yeah, you crush the uninspected mineral, it gives you a random type of mineral, and then that, I believe, is what you analyze. Or extract, or whatever. Okay, I've angered God again. Christ. <sighs> Everything seems fine, just a little minor fire. Oh, come on. <laughs> Bye. Ah, I was putting the stuff in the wrong place. It doesn't go into the chemical extractor yet. It goes into the mineral analyzer. And then whatever the mineral analyzer makes goes into the chemical extractor. Alright. So that goes here. It's doing a thing. It should give me like a shard of something. Yeah. So it uses up a little bit of the test tube. Oh, does it not... Oh, it doesn't process again unless you extract it, so I gotta make sure I extract out of this thing fast, otherwise it's wasting time. Different type of shard. Got two different kinds. So I guess this stack is 21% cobalt, 11% sulfur, lead, and tungsten. So I think if I put that in the chemical extractor, it should extract the parts out of that. And give me the elements, I think. Got a little bit of Co and some S. <laughs> Wish I knew what those stood for. Cobalt, and I forgot what the other one was. Ah, so it looks like once the bar reaches the top, that gives you one dust that you can extract out of the thing. Okay. Let's see if I can get something I've never gotten before here. Well, there's some tungsten. Never had tungsten before, I don't think. Now that I know the whole thing works, now I need to make a system that's going to transport the starlight over there, and I need to set up a whole system that will just constantly transform the gravel. And then I guess transport it or something? Or I might just have it go into a drawer, but anyway, I need to make a whole processing system so I can mass produce this stuff. First step is dealing with the starlight. So I don't know how much the starlight is going to be hampered by traveling all the way from here to there. I don't know if that's really, really far or not that big of a deal. So let's just test this out. Can I link this? Let's just start with that. Yeah. How do I unlink where it's going right now? Because I assume it's distributing the starlight evenly between all the links, including the ones it's kept for there. Okay, uh, I managed to unlink that 
crystal from those areas down there. Despite what it looks like, it still looks like it's shining there, but I don't think it is. I placed sand blocks there and they stopped looking like they were actually transforming, so I think it's good. Also, for some reason the game crashed while I was trying to unlink stuff. Not sure why. Yeah, visually it seems to be quite funky. Like, this is linked to up here, but there is no light source, and it's not linked down there, but there are light sources going there. So I'm not really sure what's happening with that, but I'm just going to assume it's all good. Now, I want to see what the range of this lens is. Like, can I link it to something all the way over here? Hmm, guess not. Okay, the range isn't too far. This worked, but over there didn't work, so it's maybe like a dozen blocks or so. Now, let's see at this length. Let's see how strong the light is. Okay. Well, that's a problem. So not only does it look like this thing's not actually sending a light up there, but it seems like it actually isn't. Oh, had a line of sight blocked. There we go. Um. That also had a line of sight blocked. There we go. Do I have more gravel? I don't, dang it, because I remember this took a while before, too. Let me go grab some gravel. Well, it's already turned to clay, so that wasn't too bad, but let's try it with gravel. Oh yeah, that's still pretty much instant. So this really hasn't reduced the effectiveness of it much at all, so it should be no problem to transport it all the way over there, and the signal should be pretty strong even still. Alright, so let me make some more lenses. I think I'm going to need two or four more or so. And actually for that I'm going to need more rock crystals, so I'm going to go find more rock crystals, make more lenses, um, and then I think I'm going to start constructing some pillars. I don't just want some just lenses like on the ice that looks really dumb. So I'm going to make some pillars to put them on. Okay, so I'm thinking something like this. Using architecture craft to make little pillars. Uh, they're probably mostly going to be taller than this one, so it's just a test. Um, I'll probably put a little bit of a base of marble around it so it's not just a pillar on top of ice, because that doesn't really make much sense. And I made two more lenses with purity of 82. So I should have enough lenses to make it get all the way over there. Alright, let me build this out. Got the pillars mostly set up. Ended up having to get even more prismarine and more rock shards and make even more lenses because their range is really quite short. So I've got them coming most of the way over here. I've got one more lens so I can make one more pillar. And that's going to be the one that shines onto where the gravel is to make the uninspected ore. And I'm thinking what I want to do is add another platform out here. Probably put the pillar somewhere around there. And then the platform will be right here. So I'm thinking I'm going to connect it to this one, but not just as, uh, just like as a direct continuation of this one. I want it to be a separate platform, and I think I want it to be on a slightly different level, just so it's kind of more, I don't know, 3D. Not just one big flat slab. So I'm thinking there's going to be some stairs here that go down a little bit, and then another platform. So I'm going to build that out. Alright, I've got this little platform built. The hole's not going to remain there, that's just to help me put down something that I'm about to try. So I want to try using Architecture Craft to make a big uh, support beam. So instead of being a blocky support beam like that, I want to try making a rounded one. Now all the ones we've used so far are quite small and would look ridiculously spindly, however there is one that actually forms a four block thing. So let's see how this works. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that is exactly what I wanted. Actually, it looks kind of pretty. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to look pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to keep building it up. There we go. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, I should have done that for, for this. But I'm going to leave that. I think it looks pretty cool. It's not worth redoing. And I've got some marble stairs here. The new ones that they added to Astral Sorcery. Alright, let me bring the starlight all the way over here and start to plan out how the system's actually going to work to continuously produce the 
the mineral that I wanted to. Whoa, check this out! The new update to Immersive Engineering that I did must have added that sound effect. That is very satisfying. Oh, I love it. So I'm in the middle of preparing a bunch of stuff right now, and I guess I'll just give you a quick update. Oh, uh, just don't worry about all that stuff, but right now what I'm making is a metal press mold for wires, because I'm going to have to make some wires. And if you remember, the metal press makes wires at one ingot to two wires, whereas if you use just a normal tool, it only gives you one wire, so it's a lot more efficient. So this one still has the, uh, the plate press on it, and this one I'm going to put the wire mold. Okay, I think I have everything ready, so I've been trying to look at the items that I need, the blocks that I need, and the tools that I need to hopefully get a pretty much automated system working for generating the... the, uh, what is it? Uninspected... mineral? Yeah, uninspected mineral. So if you think about it, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to place gravel. So we need something that can place gravel. Then the gravel is gonna be transformed into the uninspected mineral. Then we need something to break the uninspected mineral, turn it into an item. And then we need another thing to suck up that item. And ideally, although I don't think it's absolutely required, I also want something that can detect when the gravel has turned into the uninspected mineral so that I can trigger the block breaker to only activate when it has turned into an uninspected mineral because I don't want the, the placer to place gravel and then the breaker just breaks it before it's even transformed. I don't think I have to do that, but to make it the most efficient, um, I think I should. Because I could probably just rig it up to a delay where like every two seconds it breaks, a, breaks a, a block, and maybe sometimes it happens to break it into gravel, and not the thing you want, but then you just like toss that out. But I don't know, it's, it's not very clean, probably slow. So let's experiment here. Looks like it's turning nighttime. So I'm going to make four machines, all of which I don't think I've ever used before. I've used some things like them. But I don't think I've ever used these exact ones, so mostly I'm using actually additions. So that's my breaker. Stuff we've made before, except for the void crystal. That's in the atomic reconstructor, but that's just coal. Turns into a void crystal. Super easy. And then similarly to the auto breaker, there's an auto placer. Only new thing is the palace crystal, which is just the atomic reconstructor with lapis lazuli. Whoops. Also from Actually Editions, the Ranged Collector. Pretty straightforward. So that's going to be to pick up the items. And then here, Entity Detector. I do not know if this is going to do what I want it to do. I don't know if this is going to detect blocks. I don't know if a block is technically an entity or... Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure. It's a pretty straightforward recipe though, so I'm going to try it out. Okay. Oh, um, yes, I also made some redstone wire coils and redstone wire connectors. So just like the LV, like the low voltage connectors that I've been using in immersive engineering, it's pretty much the same thing, except this transmits redstone. Redstone's just, I don't think I've ever explained redstone. If you've never played Minecraft, you probably don't know what redstone is, but it's just a, a basic circuit. So it doesn't transmit power, it just transmits signals. Um, where should we start? I could... Alright, let's actually just start over there. However I build it to begin with is definitely not how it's going to end up being. It's going to be very messy and then I'll try to clean it up afterwards, but I just want to make sure this is actually going to work. So the basic thing I'm imagining is we start with a drawer that's stuffed full of a bunch of gravel. And then we take the gravel and put it to the placer. Oh. Oh right, it doesn't even need power. Oh good, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, looks like it doesn't need power. Whew. Okay, so that places it, and then the breaker will do exactly what you think. Ah, oh, it's facing the wrong way, isn't it? Let me just place it like this. Oop. 
Yep, so that's doing pretty much what I thought it would. So, we only want this to activate when it receives redstone. Good, I've got the stuff on me to make a redstone torch. Right click to toggle. Okay, so it's... Yeah, so it'll only break when it receives a pulse of redstone. An on-off. So now it's stopped for now. So let's try the entity detector. Living entity, animals, monster players, items. Mm, I don't see blocks there. Well, I'll just try custom. Okay, so I want this thing to detect... Hmm... Crap, I don't know if this is going to do what I want it to do. Does it need something special? Like, it's got like a blueprint icon. Okay, so I think an item filter is meant to go inside of it. And that can be made with just four uh, yellow dye and one piece of paper. So, yeah, so if you use the piece of paper, the item filter, can put what we want to look for. So we want to look for that. Let's see, does any of this matter? Nope, set exactly how we want, and we want to whitelist this one thing. Wait, what? Really? Okay, I found an item that can do it. I actually ended up having to cheat it in just to make sure that I would do it. Because if you look at the description for it, it's really big. Sensor. This logic block gives a redstone signal depending on various circumstances in front of it, like block placement, crop growth level, number of entities, and then it just stops. Yeah, it, it's not very specific. And I had to make some new stuff that I'd never made before to make it, so I figured, okay, rather than go through all that and just be disappointed, let me make sure. So, tested it. It does do what I wanted to do, just deleted it, and now I'm making it properly. So, the base that I need to make it comes from gold plates, resonating redstone, some steel, and quartz resonator. Quartz resonator is pretty simple, just some obsidian and some quartz blocks. And then right in the middle of all this, makes sensor. Alright, let's go put this thing into place. It really is baffling to me that the Random Things mod has all these different detectors. Entity detectors and online detectors and chat detectors, but no block detector. It's really weird. Anyway, so if we put this... That's not the right way. Can I rotate it like this? Yeah, uh, no. That way. So this, it's detecting in that direction, and it's going to output the redstone signal directly behind it. Okay, so I'm not going to use this to hook it up in the end. I'm going to use redstone wires because it'll probably look better, but uh, it's easier just to put the redstone down just to see, to make sure it's working. So, by default, it's set to detect whether a block is present. Right now it's detecting one block in front of it. And... Oh yeah, that's how many... So, at least one block must be detected. You can set it to all, so if there's a bunch of blocks there, uh, I guess that wouldn't apply to area 1, but if you had a larger area, you could say that you want all the blocks to be that. So area 1, just 1 is fine. This is the filter. So I probably have some here. Yep, uninspected mineral. So uninspected mineral here. There we go. See it's giving a signal now. So it emits a redstone signal when it detects uninspected mineral, which means when there's a redstone signal, that's when we want to run the auto breaker. Now, I don't actually want it to run on a pulse. I want it to run when it's receiving a signal, right? Because a pulse is on off. This thing's just going to give it on. And I don't think this is going to do what I want. No, so that's that's the reverse of what I want. That means it needs a redstone signal to be disabled. I want it to need a redstone redstone signal to be on. 
I think we can do an inverter. I don't know how I would do that with redstone wire coil. I don't know if there's a simple way. Uh, but I always forget how redstone transmits through blocks. There we go. I think this is going to do what I want. So a redstone torch, by default, emits a redstone signal. As you can see, it's lit. However, if the redstone torch itself receives a redstone signal, as it is from here, it deactivates. So I think actually that should work, right? Yeah, so now... Wait, what just happened? Oh, it changed. Oh, it's right, right, right. It's still set on pulse. I gotta change it. No. Change it. Plop. Okay. So this thing is not outputting a signal. Yeah, it's working. It's not outputting a signal, and when it doesn't output a signal, it doesn't flip this, which means this thing is active. So when that's not outputting a signal, this is getting a signal. Therefore, it's deactivated. This thing outputs a signal when that becomes what we want it to be, which flips this and makes it so that this is no longer receiving a signal, therefore it's no longer deactivated, and it turns on. So this would probably be a lot faster if we set it to nighttime. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is so cool, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Let me set it to day just to slow this thing down. Yeah, we don't need to turn that on anymore. Now, the only thing left to test is the ranged collector. We need to collect the ore. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, we don't. No, we don't. It doesn't just dumbly break the ore. When it breaks it, it actually takes it into its own inventory, so we don't even need a collector. Yeah, okay, so solved. This is all we need. Just the placer, the breaker, and a sensor. And with that, we should be pretty much good to go. So let me think of a way to make this actually look kind of pretty and not absolutely hideous like this. All right, I think I got the thing set up. It looks pretty much the same as before. <laughs> I tried to make it look pretty. I thought, okay, I'll put some pillars on the corner of this thing and then raise it up on a platform and try to hide the stuff in the platform. Well, didn't really work. I tried really hard to hide it, but I just, I just don't know how to deal with the redstone. I mean, any way you cut it, for a placer, a breaker, and a sensor, you're gonna need to put them on three different sides of this, and wherever the gravel and the unexpected mineral is going to go also has to be pretty open. It can't be buried anywhere because the light from there needs to be able to get to it. So you're pretty limited. You've got to cover three sides. It's got to be pretty open. And then you have to have redstone. And I, I tried to use the redstone wire coils and, and the connectors to try to pretty it up. But unfortunately, I just couldn't really get them to work the way I wanted to for this. It just didn't really work. And trying to fit the inverter of the redstone torch in to this whole chain just doesn't work so well. I really hate redstone. Like, I, I love what redstone allows you to do, but vanilla redstone mechanics to me are just god-awful. It, it does all sorts of weird things that you don't want it to do, and it's just really, really strange. Like, one thing I still don't understand is how come, for some reason, if you want to flip a redstone torch with redstone, it seems like the redstone has to be on the same block as the redstone torch. Like this. Like redstone on top, torch on the side. If you just have a torch... Whoops. If you just have a torch like right here sitting on the bottom and then a redstone signal right next to it, it won't toggle it. So that puts its own limits on everything, trying to make it look pretty. And then you got the fact that redstone likes to automatically connect to other redstone, unintelligently. For example, you might wonder why do I have that hump there? That's because if you do this, look what happens. It automatically connects. 
So that's got to be raised up. Yeah, it just looks hideous. Ah, but it'll have to do. All right, so let's test this thing out in production. I think I've got to link this back up. Good, it didn't break it. Exactly what I want. Oh, great. There we go. Mm-hmm. That worked. Got sucked into there. Should go into there. Okay. So let me throw a bunch of gravel into here. So is that seven? Why is that not placing? Oh. Whoops. I had it reversed. I was trying to take out of the placer rather than put into it. That'll do it. Eight. Nine. Ten. There we go. It works. Yeah, and then it's producing uninspected mineral definitely faster than we could possibly process it. So I don't need to make that any faster. That's plenty fast. Even if it is a bit ugly. It's a pretty cool contraption. I'm proud of it. Oh yeah, another way in which it's ugly, by the way, that has nothing to do with redstone, is since we're dealing with the unexpected mineral in the gravel as the center block, I wanted it to be in the center, which means the platform it was on had to be odd. And this platform that I built is even. So to do that, the middle platform I built, as you can see, is not in the middle of the bigger platform, because it couldn't be. But just don't think about it, as long as you don't look too closely, it's fine. <laughs> We've already got 30. Sweet. And I think my jetpack ran out. Pretty much. I could feel it dying. It's alright. I think we can get all the way back. <laughs> this glider's amazing. Oh, it actually broke at one point, by the way. It's pretty easy to repair, though. You can just repair it by stuffing it in an anvil and giving it some leather. Costs a little bit of XP, three levels. But it's fine. So yeah, now that we've got all that... Now that we've got all that, it's just a matter of uh, making a bunch more fuel for everything and getting this whole system working. So I've got to automatically extract from the mineral sizer and stuff it in the analyzer and then extract the shards from the analyzer and put it in the chemical extractor. Kind of automate all that. But uh, yeah, we're, we're really close to getting pretty deep into rock hounding, getting automated production of all this. So I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to work on this part of the rock-hounding pipeline.